Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four, five, four. Uh, I, mean, uh, I think no, I, uh, five, right? Yes, <laughs> five. Well, we okay, so we did count on the chaos, pirate plunder panic. No, I think this is four. Okay, 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 whatever. Episode, this is how, episode, this is how, this is how, shows how committed we are. <laughs> oh, I'm not editing this out. Welcome to episode four of Sonic Comic Chaos. Today we will be talking about the second arc of post reboot Sonic Universe Shadowfall. Um, however, before we hop into that, Ian, my co-host, would you like to talk about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so, uh, my name's Ian Waffles, uh, basically all I do nowadays is go on podcasts and not make videos, but every now and then I do make videos, and they're about usually just whatever anime characters or video game, uh, things I want to talk about. I've got some videos on My Hero Academia, Love Chunibio and Other Delusions, and a Kingdom Hearts video as I'm also currently working on uh, what will probably be like an hour and a half Kingdom Hearts 2 video. So if any of that oh, stuff geez. interests you, uh, you can look forward to that. That's kind of the stuff I do. But yeah, otherwise, just a huge fan of the pre-boot Archie Sonic comics and the reboot and just trying to help Silver Ace get through it since he's never gone through it before. Well, funny you mentioned that because we're already betraying the conceit of the show. I actually read this before. Um, ah. I, I Well, funny, funny story. I owned this on Comixology. And then I went back to try and uh, get it and like read it on there, and I couldn't find it. Like something was up with my account, um, so I don't know what the deal was. So I had to um, find this uh, this arc online but in a totally legal fashion. But uh, mm -hmm. I will say, the last time I read this was like five years ago, so it's not like so, so it was still mostly all new for me. Um, gotcha. Well, cool, cool, cool. But yeah, um, so but yeah, let's jump into it. Oh, actually, right. Before we do that, I just want to say, uh, I want to say this at the top of the show, because I know most of you won't make it to the end. Uh, if you enjoy the show, if you could leave a like and uh, leave a comment, that would be great. First of all, we love seeing your comments, seeing what you think of the show. Uh, but also for a smaller show like ours, that helps uh, you to push it out to other people who might enjoy it. So uh, if you could do that, we'd greatly appreciate it. Heck yeah. Okay, but yes, let's hop into Sonic Universe, issue 59, Shadowfall, part one of four. Uh, issue 59 begins uh, in medias res, I believe is the term, uh, where uh, the we see Shadow, Team Dark, and a group of uh, gun soldiers are going to a new Black Comet. Uh, right off the bat, a really interesting detail. In the background, you can actually see the, the moon, and it's like blown in half. Oh, I nice. Was, I didn't notice that. Yeah, that's a good that detail. Essentially, they run in, they start, uh, you know, there's a lot of black creatures um, inside the comment. They start laying waste to him. Uh, Shadow quite literally stabs one of them in the back. My note says Shadow shanks a black oak. That's cool. Uh, well, I like I like what actually, I don't know if you noticed this, but I like what it kind of establishes um, just like immediately. I thought this was really clever on Flynn's part is that originally he grabs the sword and then he has it to swing, like to stab the, the dark creatures. And then he instead chooses to kick it, but then he kills it once it is about to kill a human, which is kind of not his necessarily his dilemma, but just something that is going to be pulling him here and there throughout the entire arc is the idea of like, well, you're part of the black arms. And it's like, yeah, but I choose that Earth or, you know, Sonic's world is my home. And so uh, and so it was kind of cool that just in the visuals, like in the art, they actually showed that immediately that he has this kind of conflict in him of like, well, they are still kind of a part of me and, and you know, my race of people. So I don't know if I really just want to just go guns blazing and murdering them. But as soon as a human is in danger, then he takes it out. So I just thought that was really neat. Yeah, that I think it, I think that is cool. Uh, that is, I didn't really notice that, but that is a nice detail. Uh, I actually thought that conflict was a little dumb, but we oh, uh, yeah. we'll get into that a little later. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially, we find out that the reason they're here is that they're they're putting a nuke down to uh, destroy the comet. So that way it kills all the black creatures and it keeps the comet from impacting uh, Earth or Mobius or Sonic's world or whatever we're calling it. Um, <laughs> one thing I think is interesting that I, I only now remembered in Shadow the Hedgehog, the game, uh, they make a point to say that that black comet can't penetrate Earth's atmosphere. And that's why they need to use the Chaos Emeralds to warp it down to the surface. So I guess this comet's just different. <laughs> um, Probably. <laughs> Probably would be. Probably would be take a lot of uh, 
extra time that's kind of worthless anyway to just like yeah. be like continuity consistent with that and just be like yeah it's stronger whatever yeah that, that's the thing <laughs> i i didn't think about that until literally just this moment so i mean it's fine but so they have this nuke it's called the mjolnir class tactical nuclear warhead uh that they're gonna blow it up with but wait why are our heroes here what's going on the black arms are back what so we we go back to earlier at gun hq uh where we we find out a bunch of stuff we probably could have just inferred but you know um uh we see abraham tower he's talking about the black comet it's back um one thing i think is cool is that the way they take the game canon and they like make it make sense i guess is the best way i can put it where it's like you know he just says uh abraham he has a line here that i was writing a note about where he goes all the arc sensory data confirms it it's like, yeah, the arc is a thing that exists that they would use. But like if if in the next Sonic game they were just to randomly name drop the arc, it'd be like, wait, what? Yeah, considering just how like how often they just kind of take it for granted or just don't talk about it. I mean, it'd be it'd be crazy if in the next Sonic game the the moon is messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like like at this point them paying attention to continuity is would be weirder than just their blatant disregard for it. But you never know, but so essentially, we uh, we also set up in this scene how the other gun soldiers don't really trust Shadow. Well, one thing I think is also interesting is that so in Shadow the Hedgehog, they they make you know the whole big thing of it is that um you have the ten different endings, then you have the one canon one, and it's kind of implied in that game that the the canon pathway is like some combination of all of them. Yeah. Um, and we see here one element of that is uh that at some point Shadow was either working with Black Doom or was just kind of, you know, close enough to Black Doom to where they were discussing, you know, their invasion. It was, a, uh, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, no, I thought that was cool too, how they, uh, Flynn was like taking kind of different pieces of the routes and kind of canonizing them, at least for this story. Yeah, but so they're talking. And then one thing I just noticed is that we see Team Dark's like little logo on uh, Towers, like, powerpoint presentation that's just shadow's head that's fun yeah. um but so uh not much more to say there we cut back to the present so essentially the the soldiers are working their way through the comet and we cut to not black doom but black death because sure because sure you know um i'm not yeah. the biggest fan of his design something about like him not having the horns it makes him look a little too round okay oh of um the new black doom is that which yeah. one you're talking about yeah, yeah no i thought his i thought his design was a little boring <laughs> yeah i don't know i just i don't i don't know and then we see uh eclipse who introduce introduces himself to the line after all i'd hate to lose a brother with to which in my notes i just wrote dun 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 um, yeah what do you think of a what do you think of eclipse's design it looks like knuckles like I'm, i can't be the only one who sees that right <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it's got similarities in in, in for sure. Um, it, yeah, go ahead. It's just I, there's a in a future arc, uh, the one where Shadow and Knuckles fight. I forget what that one's called. I remember there being a line, something to the effect of like, "Hey, there's this guy who looks like Shadow." And it's like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he, like, I think his design is uh, fine. Um, you know, nothing spectacular, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like him. Right. Yeah. Also, of course. also, this episode will almost certainly be called Shadow's Secret Brother, because <laughs> uh, you know we got gotta get those clicks. But so, but so we're working our way through. And one thing I thought was was interesting is that uh, so we have this one, this uh, this captain. We find out his name later. It starts with isn't Andrew? It starts with an A. I don't remember. Um, Andrew and Tower. A, is this guy a tower too? <laughs> Uh, is that the guy giving the? Are you, you're talking about the guy talking to Rouge, right? I'm talking about the guy who um he's like really antagonistic to Shadow throughout the entirety of the book. Okay, yeah, sorry, that's a different guy. Sorry, all the humans, I don't care about them. So I'm just like, yeah. which one again? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they're they're all disposable. If this if this comic were like a rating higher, none of them would have made it out of this. But regardless, <laughs> one um, guy gets tortured for a whole scene. That was pretty dope. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Well, but we'll we'll get to that. Um, but one thing I thought was weird was how you know this guy throughout the entire of the book and in this scene, 
uh, he, he goes, um, he, he goes like, hey, we have a resident alien hybrid thing to show us the way. And, you know, we have a little exchange between him and Shadow. And one thing I thought was interesting where it's like, OK, if you don't trust Shadow and you're worried about him turning on you, the last thing you want to do is piss him off. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way we'll like, keep. That's that's his uh, that's his way of doing the power of love thing. Instead of power of love, it's the power of annoyance. So Shadow won't even think to betray us because he'll have too much of his personality intact fighting me. That guy's a genius. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, of course, of course. But even that, like Shadow, Shadow wouldn't even have to turn on them. He would just have to be like, you know what, bye, and just like teleport away. And like, how are they? They're not gonna make their way through this comment on their own. Like, right. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Also, uh, I wrote realizing that Omega is shorter than an average human is funny. Just because, like any other time we see him, it's it's next to these like little anthro people, it's next to the furries, so that yeah. he always seems like he's much taller than he is. Yeah, but he's like five feet tall, <laughs> <laughs> um, which I which I think is fun. Um, and then we get uh, the scene where essentially Shadow's tapping into the hive mind, and Rouge and Omega are like, "Oh man, is he, is he going to lose it on us?" Um, and so Shadow talks to Omega, uh, and he's got this this conversation about like, "Hey, when you turned uh, against Eggman, did, were you ever conflicted about a, uh, you know, fighting against your your robot brethren?" And, and Omega's he was like, like, "No, nah, no, nah, that's like... stupid." <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's 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 part of my problem with this conflict uh, is that it's like it's barely a conflict. <laughs> is Shadow after already thinking he eradicated the Black Arms sees more of them and goes. I mean, like, I know they're evil and they literally eat people, but like, I'm but, like, I got some of them in me, so like, maybe I shouldn't kill them. Like, <laughs> no, I it's just... not, no, I totally get you. I think I just more enjoyed it as just like, uh, just like sort of an extra little layer that ties into Eclipse, where you have Eclipse who he actually really does care about all these mindless monsters, even though like, like, uh, Black death or whatever says it's like no like they legitimately it's just him and eclipse that have any sort of like sentience and except for like the the little pods they escape with because those guys will come back later but like they're the ones with sentience and everything else is just kind of like an extension of the hive mind but i kind of like that eclipse does care about them as like a part of himself so that's kind of i think it's mostly just there to parallel shadow where it's like well now that he's back and he's got a better you know understanding of things he's like ah it's a bit I don't, I don't know, but he's like, nah, I'm gonna kill you. And then by the end, yeah. he chaos blasts. So, sure, it doesn't, I, don't, I I agree with you, it probably doesn't really work much as a conflict, but I think it works uh, well enough as just kind of like a interesting thing for him to ponder. Because it's not like at any point he ever seriously considers joining them. He fights back tooth and nail the entire time. And it's just more so that since he's already thinking about it, you can have the characters then come in and be like, Shadow, how could you do this to your own race? And he's like, because I hate you, and then he kills them. <laughs> so uh, I, think it, I think that's mostly what it's there for. But I totally understand there could have been maybe, uh, maybe like a, a different way to kind of like make it more nuanced, or you know something like that. Or maybe he starts out and he's like totally fine with it, but then he meets someone like Eclipse, and he's like, oh wait, there's others who, you know, maybe have more sentience. It's like, well, what does that mean for the rest of the Black Arms? I don't know. Maybe you could have like refocused it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, again, it's not a big problem because they don't dwell on it too much. Like, like if there was a big scene where he's like, oh, I don't know. But it's more like, I mean, I guess the idea of being like a little like, should we commit genocide? Like, I, I guess that that's a that's fair. Um, And they don't dwell on it much. So it's not like a big knock against the story. It was just like, it, it's part of the problem I have with IDW Shadow, which we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about him a little later, is that like, it's a lesson we should have he should have already learned about how like you know the earth is his adopted home and it doesn't matter where you come from and so the fact that we're going out of our way to like reinforce that and this it was just i don't know it felt weird well and it's a bit it's a bit different than um pre-boot because in pre-boot he learns a similar lesson uh but he has the excuse of we follow all of shadow in that game um so whereas this one it's like no shadow the hedgehog has happened so, you know, he should have already probably come to this conclusion. Yeah. But uh again, it's 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 whatever. It's it's not like great, but it doesn't ruin the book or anything. Um yeah. so then we get one of my favorite interactions in the book with um Shadow and Rouge, where uh the we find one of the little like uh tunnel things from uh Shadow the Hedgehog, I think uh conduit gel is what he calls it. It's where you yeah. hop in and you spin through it and uh Rouge is like, hey, don't do that. And Shadow's like, but I'm gonna do it. And she's like, don't. He's like, I'm gonna. And then he goes into it. Um, 
<laughs> and then you know he has the, he has the you know you got this little panel where it's like I, I wrote the note it's like god shadow just acting like a person is nice because like he's here he's got he's got his little smile and he's like look i'll be fine like <laughs> yeah there was a lot of really good like little character moments for him where like even when he comes out the other side and and then he sees there's a billion you know black arms guys he's like darn it rouge why are you always right <laughs> oh my god i love that line that was like one of the few lines i remembered from this like from when i read it like the first time because it's just uh it's like the I, I will say i think the the best part of this arc is the characterization and like the dialogue between especially team dark yeah, I think that's what really carries it and makes it the most like enjoyable part. Because even in preboot, like their um, dynamic isn't as strong as this because a lot of them have like a lot more conflicting uh, kind of things that they're going for, and they're not. You know, Team Dark just doesn't get as much in preboot. Um, yeah. But then in, in reboot, it's more of like they've been on more missions together. They're they're a solid team, and so you actually get to kind of see the the cute moments between them rather than just like the the chaos of them as a team which is more like what preboot had where you have all these kind of conflicting personalities but in reboot they're like a whole they're a unit and i really like that yeah i think it's interesting because i was thinking about this earlier i uh, i actually think that um team dark might have benefited from the reboot like more, and like i which if you told me i would be saying anything even similar to that like two years ago i would have called you crazy but like you look at um like reboot and preboot and like nothing was really lost in terms of like their personalities or their dynamic. They just kind of trimmed a lot of the bullshit mm -hmm. where it's like, um, you know, with shadow, it's like, Oh, well he falls from space and then, uh, okay. But so an Eggman finds him, right? No, he was captured by these weird alien things, uh, charged full of chaos energy, fell again, became evil again for a little bit, then stopped being evil and then went to work for gun. It's like, oh, okay, uh, what about Omega? Oh, you see, Omega is a uh, gamma, but he shoved his programming inside of Omega, and so it's some weird combination of the two of them. And, and I don't know what Rouge's deal really is in Preboot. But and so it's like... like a terrible, horrible person who is willing oh, yeah. to let people die and drop, uh, drop islands on top of cities and basically do whatever makes her happy because she's a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> and literally destroy an entire dimension uh, because she wants out, a shiny out, rock. Out of sight, out of mind, baby. <laughs> yeah. But so in this, it's like, no, nah, it's just Omega's a robot who's pissed at Eggman. Shadow is what he was in the games. Like, uh, like I do, like, obviously, I would never say that the preboot stuff was bad. And I thought all those stories were, were fun and interesting. But, like, I think here, like, especially if you're, like, talking to, like, a new reader, I think it definitely does them uh, some good. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I really like this dynamic. And I'm sure, like, if Preboot had enough time, it would have led to this eventually. But it's glad, it's nice to just kind of have it be in this scenario right now so we can just jump in. It's kind of like with Amy. Like, Amy was being built up to kind of be more proactive and, and involved in the story in Preboot. But then in Reboot, it's like, well, we have no excuse now. Let's just make her active and involved. So, yeah. so it, you know, it's, it's one of the good things about Reboot as far as, like, allowing the characters to kind of uh, delve more into the properties of them that most normal fans would associate with them and like you said kind of cutting all the insanity that preboots there um, yeah. which is stuff i love about them because it makes them unique and interesting but it's not that removing it makes them worse it just you know it makes it a lot easier to enjoy yeah yeah um what and then we get to the point where i you see this part i get that they were trying to build tension but i saw through it immediately where they're like oh no they're gonna gas us it's like you're you're wearing spacesuits. <laughs> there's like and I, actually there's a point later where like cause obviously the way they saw this is they just put their helmets down but later on they put the helmets back up and it's like don't just keep them down you're in space like there's no reason for you to ever put them up like, right yeah i mean it's mostly just there so we can show off uh rouge and shadow needing them but shadow doesn't even need them either so it's just rouge <laughs> Uh, Rouge having the air necklace actually, uh, I thought was a nice touch. I thought that was cool. Um, yeah. but so, uh, we well, got and, back and he also wants to like reference back to uh, Shadow the Hedgehog when they did this to all the characters and they were gonna get eaten by the slugs. So, yes, uh, Ian Flynn wants to wave his big uh, Sonic fan nerd card around and say, like, Hey, I remember this, I remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a curse all us Sonic fans have, but so anyway, uh, we cut to Shadow and we find out that he cannot use his chaos control inside of uh, 
this area. And so he just kind of gets gets beaten up a little bit by the black arms. Uh, and so uh, he fights until, shock of all shocks, we get our first good look at Eclipse the Darkling, uh, Shadow's brother, kind of. Yeah. Um, and I wrote here for my note, um, <laughs> Eclipse decides to read us some of his edgy poetry. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> his, his line is, a living weapon built for a singular purpose. The black arm biology perfected. I am the shadow that blocks out the last light of hope. I am Eclipse the Darkling. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but yeah, so we see him. Uh, one thing I wonder. So we, we all know about part of the Sega mandates is that they can't have family members. Was this like... Ian trying to like press his luck to see if he's like, well, I mean, they're brothers in the sense that it's like, you know, they they both get their blood from the black arms, but like they're not really brothers. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think in that case, like you're playing enough, uh, like, you know, like black death or, you know, black doom is like, you know, I think in the games, he's like, technically I'm like your dad. Cause you have some of my DNA. So it's just playing off game canon that was already established. So I think it, yeah. it works just fine as far as like what they would allow for. Yeah, I just like the idea of Ian like five issues in to this new uh, universe already trying to push his luck. <laughs> See what he can get away <laughs> with. Um, but so then we get um this uh, uh and my next note was just Eclipse looks like Knuckles, but we already talked about that. Uh, and so my final note was about this off panel, which honestly raises a lot of questions because he goes like. Because they're like, oh, you know, if we had the Chaos Emeralds, we could, you know, use the Eclipse Cannon to blow up the uh, the Comet, but we don't have it. And then, you know, the joke is like, oh, well, why don't we go to get the Master Emerald from Knuckles? But all I could think was like, why don't you? Right. Like, like you, like that, like, I'm sure if, like, you went and explained the situation to it, the world's already floating. Like, but, uh, anyway. So, uh, that first issue, uh, pretty good. Not too much to talk about, but it, uh, it was fun. So then we move on. Yeah, it's Press mostly on. like it's mostly like an action issue, just kind of establishing just all the different personalities, what we're kind of going for, and then by the end you get your big whoa new character. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we press on to Sonic Universe number sixty, uh, Shadowfall Part Two of Four, Shadow Gone Evil? Question mark exclamation <laughs> mark. Um, not that's what I should call this podcast, but. <laughs> Red circle arrow on the <laughs> onto shadow about to murder this gun agent. Yeah. Uh, but it's a cool so, cover, um, it, I do love this cover. I, I think like actually all the covers are really cool in this. Uh, the art actually in general is really cool for this arc. But so, oh, yeah. um, I, oh, my first note was shadow gone evil. And then I went, oh, so like he's been for the past five years. Uh, Finally. <laughs> we, we cut in black death is like, ha ha. Uh, everything, everything's coming up. Everything's coming up. I was about to say everything's coming up black, but that might that might sound bad. But I already I mean, said it. So. I mean, you've been saying destroy the black creatures this entire time, and that's not your fault. That's the comic, <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, so we kept back. You know, the shadows up up here with Eclipse. Eclipse has a weird bird thing on his arm. Uh oh, here is where we see the air necklace. I thought that was last issue, but I was sorely mistaken. Um, we get some more, uh, fun banter between Rouge and Omega. Omega is great, just in general. I love Omega. Oh, yeah. But Dude, the entire, uh, there's not really much to say about him, just that the entire, the entire four-parter, he was just really funny. Right. Um, Flynn really, you know, leans in on his kind of per portrayal and, uh, Sonic Heroes with just mocking everything he sees for being inferior to him, which then, of course, is fun when it's contrasted against, like, you know, the fact that he does care about Shadow or Rouge, so... There's not really too much to say about him, just that he's a consistent delight. Yeah, yeah, and and a lot of my notes here are just like quotes of things he says. <laughs> um, then this next thing uh, is something that I remembered, which uh, Black Death makes point to go. Uh, none of these, none of the other uh, races gave us this much trouble. And in my note, I went, well, unless you count the Zorda, which um, we don't. <laughs> yeah, which unfortunately we do not. But uh, it was the Zorda, right? And uh, Preboot who. Yeah, we're, those are the uh, guys who they were fighting, and that was the the in universe excuse as to why they weren't, why we weren't adapting Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> I wonder if they ever would have gotten around to it, or or if they were like, you know, we're just not, we're not going to talk about that. I think at the time, like 
black doom was off limits um and like just in general like that kind of, like because i think this is around the time they were pretty ashamed of it too so they were probably just like nope don't but also like at around the time they couldn't use like cream the rabbit so like sega's you know whatever they want at the time is just random so wait what yeah, that's always a thing that he talks about when it's like there's no mandates like the mandates aren't like there's no hard and fast mandates or whatever, because like back whenever I was working on the comic, they just said for a while you can't use cream the rabbit. And then later they said you can use cream the rabbit. It just depends on who's in charge at the time and who says what. Oof. Well, but cream the Ra- cream was introduced like at the beginning of his run, though, like right around there. Uh, no, she gets introduced around, like, around the time, it's, like, near the Sonic Universe stuff, so that's, like, because he starts at Um, 160, and Universe doesn't start until, like, 200, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Which is, like, a few years. (laughs) Oh, man, I, I, pre-boot, a lot of it is, unfortunately, a blur for me, but so, anyway, um, they're, they're, uh, they're talking, and we see more of how Shadow can't use his Chaos Control. And a note I had, which this was one, uh, I, I don't know if fallacy is the right word, but like one thing I noticed while I was reading it, which is like, if, if they can do that, maybe it would have been a good idea to do that like back during like Shadow the Hedgehog, the game. Oh, just like use chaos control? No, make it so he couldn't use chaos control. Oh, <laughs> it's a video game. They don't care. We need, yeah. we got to be able to use it for the levels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so, okay. Um, but so they get into a little tussle. Uh, we see these horrifying looking worm things. Uh, yeah, which are also from the game. And I was like, yeah. when they were like, when they were like, oh, God, these things. I was like, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, they were the worst. You know, what? actually, Ian, quick aside. How do you feel about Shadow the Hedgehog the game? Um, I have not played it in like probably 10 years, but I remember <laughs> liking it just because the gun combat was fun. Uh, the controls were awful because they're the same as heroes. So you're slipping and sliding everywhere and you don't have flight. So you're just going to fall off every now and then. And homing attack chains would never work. But I think generally, like, it has one of my favorite just, like, level lists as far as, like, aesthetics. Like, it's all dark and gritty, but I like how just, like, how varied and different it is and how they, they kind of go into all these different levels. If that was just one streamlined adventure and we got, like, 30 levels of, of that, that would have been incredible. Um, but as it is, uh, it's a pain, and uh, maybe I'll go back to it and play like two playthroughs, and then never touch it again. <laughs> uh, you, okay, so it's a, it's like my it's like my number six Sonic game. I really like Shadow the Hedgehog, um, nice. largely because it's like a it's like the closest we've ever gotten to like a direct sequel to um, like the Sonic Adventure two, um, like story wise, it's like straight up just like a linear path, um, and it it like unites a lot of the adventure era. Um, so I really like it for that um what yeah. the, the 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 mission structure is not great uh <laughs> i i don't know i remember thinking like you know what would have been better is if like you just you hit a point in a level where it's like you can follow sonic or you can follow black doom uh and yet you know there's just like a simple prompt that comes up and you pick one and then that determines your path in the level and then that but no f- destroy 45 black black creatures in the first level like that's yeah sure that's fun um Although, uh, I discovered a little cheat for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, you, what you do is you play neutral up until Sky Troops. And then usually I like to do pure hero because I'm a stick in the mud. Um, mm-hmm. But you play up until Sky Troop, just neutral. And then from there, you pick your thing and you can still um, go either pure hero or pure dark from there. Um, right. if, yeah. So. That's what I do. Uh, I haven't played like a pure hero uh, like playthrough since the first time, and I probably never will again. Um, but anyway, yeah, I like Shadow the Hedgehog. A side over. Yeah, um, I need to. Yeah, I, I would definitely want to go back and try it sometime, but I have no clue what it'll be like. Yeah. Um, but so we get back to Shadow, who's fighting Eclipse, and we get this uh, this scene where essentially we get we get our exposition about where what the Black Arms are doing. Um, so we see. Super Shadow fighting Devil Doom from Shadow the Hedgehog. And so uh, we see all the stuff. We see uh, how uh, Black Death was like awakened upon uh, the destruction of uh, Black Doom. And then uh, Eclipse was created to fight Shadow. 
And now, uh, here we are. And Eclipse and Black Death's goals are a little at odds, whereas Black Death just wants to kill Shadow. Uh, Eclipse, uh, who has a big thing for preserving the uh, the Black Arms, wants to convert him and bring him over to their side. Um, and what one neat thing I thought uh, was cool about uh, this scene where they're inside his brain is we actually see like the different moves from Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, like we yeah. see him do a chaos, we see him do a chaos blast, which we've seen him do before, but we see him do like the blue flying light thing that he does. No, well, that whole section was really good just because one, all the references, but two, I love like using the blood vessel or the you know the blood cells as like panels, and then having like the starfish as like the panel borders, so it's like a spread of all these different memories and having the different kind of uh, you know thoughts and and feelings be like juxtaposed, and then you have the giant star uh, you know against a tiny shadow who's like moving through all of this. Like I thought that little section was just visually very entertaining. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna look and see if I can find um, cause this one the 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 double page splash with like you know all the different memories and we see Eclipse and uh, Black Death and Shadow like I'm definitely gonna see if I make if I can find like a textless version of this because it is just like gorgeous like with all the different like uh you know scenes from SA two and Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, oh for sure, yeah, yeah. But so Shadow tries to fight against the mind control. He tries to like strangle eclipse or whatever he's doing here and then <laughs> one thing i thought was confusing is black death goes eclipse it's your last chance to turn him and then he just touches his head and immediately shadows under his control it's like why were you telling eclipse to do that <laughs> yeah i thought that was kind of funny too where he's just like it can't be done and then he's like okay i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> well and then we see a scene later where it's like no wonder uh, Black Doom couldn't control Shadow. Uh, you know he's really um, he's fighting my commands. But it's like, how can you control him then? Yeah, I think it's just supposed to be the idea they wore him down by then. But yeah, it was funny that he's just like, it can't be done. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Black Death is like Eclipse. I'm I'm very much regretting giving you free will because you keep not doing what you're told. Uh, essentially, Eclipse and Shadow both charge off to go fight um <clears throat> team dark and uh, the gun soldiers we get some banter between the uh andrews his name's andrews so I, that's probably his last name then um and rouge mm -hmm. uh, one thing i thought was interesting is we see a bit with him where he's like uh you know we're not we're just gonna set the nuke off and leave you know yeah we have to do this right and uh i do like how he's not just like a one-dimensional rube like like, he, he cares about, like, doing the job right. He's just, like, kind of a dick. Yeah, I thought generally, like, while I don't really care about the humans, I thought they weren't, like, an annoying presence simply because they they were willing to add a little bit of that nuance to him of just, like, all right, well, at least if he's going to be here and he's going to be talking, then, you know, there's more to him than just, Shadow, why? Why did he betray us, Shadow? Shadow, I always hated that guy. Shadow, Shadow, <laughs> Shadow. So so I appreciated that. And, um, and the same kind of goes for, I mean, we'll get to it later, but it applies now is like the scene with uh tower where he's like you know just to be clear i have no ill will towards shadow i don't want to send anyone to die but you know it, you know if something's got to be done it's got to be done and i was like all right well that's good that you know it gives a bit of characterization for him yeah except he says he has no ill will towards shadow after he calls him an, a chaos fueled engine of destruction i mean he's just using the proper terminology <laughs> okay Damn it. All right, so <laughs> give me a sec. Oh, I don't know why that got me. All right, but so uh, no. <laughs> <God damn it>. <laughs> <laughs> the people watching are just like, what is wrong? What is happening? Oh, they, they love it. They know they love it. I hope so. Uh, they don't tell us. <laughs> comment down below, please. <laughs> yeah. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh yeah, smash that subscribe button. I already said subscribe. It's fine. Anyway, so Shadow shows up. He's evil now. Uh, one thing I thought was a uh, was interesting is that they don't play too much on the whole. Um, well, obviously Shadow betrayed us. Like we, like you know, the Andrews has a line where he goes, "Well, I saw this coming." But there, there's no point where it's like, "Oh, but like after Shadow turns good, there's no like, oh, well, can we really trust him?" It's like, no, like we're just not dwelling on it. He's obviously mind controlled. Like, just move on. Um. Which I thought was good. Um, 
Yeah, I always dislike that kind of stuff if there's no, like, unless you have something, like, unless you build it up really well to let there be, like, an actual interesting reaction to someone being mind-controlled, then it's best to just rip the Band-Aid off quickly and just be like, all right, we know they're mind-controlled, how do we fix this? Yeah, but, um, well, yeah, just, I mean, any kind of, like, yeah, I mean, you could say that about any kind of, like, you know, forced conflict that you put in a story, but so... Uh, Shadow goes to fight Team Dark while the uh, gun soldiers fight Eclipse. And that brings us to the end of issue 60. Th this this very much feels more like one story than like, you know, various issues. Like you can't really rank the issues um individually like you can with other arcs. Oh, yeah, that's uh, not how I would do it anyway. If it's like a completed story, I always go based on that um, because really the the weekly or the individual issue experience only really matters if you were there reading it monthly <laughs> so <laughs> otherwise why would you handicap yourself and just be like well in this one issue i don't know if i got enough content uh yeah. well the the more content is literally on the next page of your stupid app idiot read it <laughs> you don't have to wait a month duh <laughs> cheesy <laughs> uh shadowfall part three of four uh sonic universe issue 61 um a matter of trust is what this issue is called actually i want to go back one because um there's a line in the last issue where uh eclipse says oh these humans aren't good for anything except like their protein chains and so i thought like wait has eclipse eaten people probably or at That's the very just... least not maybe not humans but you know well i mean yeah well i mean they haven't been to earth or whatever we're calling it but um so but it's like is he eaten, like other intelligent species? Oh, for sure. It just be, it's just weird to think that like one of the main characters or like main villains of this is is, is eaten like another intelligent being, B which then brought me to a more important question: Could Shadow eat a person? Oh, I'm sure he could get some get some extra power juju. <laughs> but you know, he's on a diet. He's he's one of those <laughs> he's one of those people loving losers, hugging hugging people. So <laughs> Okay, but so issue sixty one picks up and my first note was um we see uh Omega saying like Shadow, uh, you know, stop fighting. Uh but and like Shadow is in big letters to indicate that he's shouting it. But my first note was in the older comics that would have just been his whole name and logo form. Shadow the Hedgehog, cease at once. <laughs> yeah, and it would have been like his the logo from the game with like a little TM in the corner. Would have been great. Uh, <laughs> but alas, it is not. But so we see uh, Rouge use her little uh, spiral kick from SA2. Uh, and so they're fighting. And it's it's a, it's a cool scene. There's not much to say about it. It's, it's your typical, like, you know, our, our mind-controlled friend is fighting us and we don't want to have to hurt him, but we might have to hurt him. Uh, yeah. I have my note about, like, how are you controlling him if Black Doom couldn't? But, like, I, I think your expl explanation makes sense about um how they wore him down uh before then. And also, you could you could make the argument how it's, like, Eclipse and uh, Black Death were both, like, wearing wearing down on him, whereas before it was just Black Doom. I mean, if I if I saw that cool starfish thing, I'd probably be like, yeah, mind control me. It, it was pretty neat. You earned it. <laughs> you earned it. Uh, but so... I, and I, I wrote one thing just because I thought it would have been funny if they made a point to just have Black Death be, like, comedically incompetent. And I mean, like, he's incompetent in the sense that, like, every villain is. But it's, like, it would have been funny if he's just like, look, I don't know what I'm doing. Look, the other guy died. I had to fill his place. Is this guy going to bring a uh, comet to the <laughs> earth? Like, <laughs> so, like, play up the fact that, like, this is, like, role just got dunked on him. And he's like, dude, I wasn't even... Like I have like a wife and kids. Like I was, I was planning to like go golfing this week, like on, like on, like you know, one of the the, the dead planets. But like, geez, now I got like a whole lot of paperwork I got to do too. Like this is, this is stressful, man. Yeah, that'd be uh, fun. That would have been fun. <laughs> For an off-panel version of it, we should there there would have been like a whenever he's running through at the end of this issue and he's like, you cannot harm our race. We are superior. You're killing us all. Instead, it should have been like, oh. you can't harm our race. And then at, by the as it keeps going, just have him be like, uh, in fact, you're harming me. Like, I haven't got any sleep this week. Please, please stop, Shadow. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. And then it just ends with a therapy session and we solve this peacefully. <laughs> Only we already set the bomb, so it goes off anyway. <laughs> The end. Shadow dies. Shadow dies. 
that's what he gets for trying to be a people loving loser. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time he's died. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, they, they actually have a joke about that later. But, <laughs> alas, we will get there. Uh, but so, but so Black Death is talking to Eclipse. Uh, and so Eclipse is teleporting around. He's fighting these guys. And at first I was confused what he was doing to this, uh, this one soldier. Um, who he's got, I think he's like choking them or whatever. I was like, are they dead? Like, is he, is, is that one dead? It looks like they're dead, but I don't think any of them are dead. Nah, then Black Death is like, don't kill them. So, I mean, it would have been funny if he was like, oops, already did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I don't think so. I think. Uh, well, one are... thing I think is, yeah, well, it's funny. He says like, um, the, the, the corridor is carpeted with my fallen brothers. And I see it's why it's like, yeah, we can kill those guys. They aren't people, but like, we're not going to kill the, the humans in the, in this, this comic for little babies. <laughs> Heck yeah um but... <laughs> no i i did think it was uh i did like the moment i or it might be later but whatever it's tied to uh whenever omega like sh- just like freaking kills one of the giant ones oh, right god. In the and he's that like was great he's like my baby <laughs> oh my god that moment's amazing how he like jumps out before eclipse even finishes his sentence he's like okay you take the robot it's just, bam <laughs> he's just dead yeah, it was like some dark comedy there in a way. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that, that moment's amazing. But so, <laughs> all right, but so Eclipse is, is running around. He's stuck and he's, he gives, we have our, our big long exposition scene where the, the guy's being tortured and uh, he's putting the, what is it called? It's the, the sand or the, there's a, they have, they, it has a name, the stuff that they're being held in. Uh, uh, don't care. Bio, bio clay. <laughs> oh, okay. well, thank you, Ian. <laughs> I'm glad you're, you're invested in this. <laughs> I don't um, care in the dirt. That's that's where my that's where my sonic nerdum ends <laughs> is knowing the name of alien dirt. <laughs> alien dirt. Well, I guess you're just not as dedicated as some of the rest of us, Ian. Uh, that is true. We cut back to Shadow. He's fighting Team Dark, and so they pin him down, and we see what Tower was uh, talking to Rouge and Omega about when he asked to see them earlier. And it's it's what we talked about. Uh, she's like, "Hey, if, if Shadow turns evil, you you better kill him." Uh, and they're like, "But we don't want to kill him." He's like, "Yeah, but like, he's a what is it? It is Chaos Shield Engine of Destruction, right? I think it's. Let me look. I Gerald's Chaos. Oh, it's even better. Chaos fueled monster. <laughs> that is true. That is the correct term. It's on his birth yeah. certificate. <laughs> uh, instead of his gender, it just his chaos fuel monster. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, I made, of death, as... made of made of death and love. Uh, yeah, of course. But so, uh, and then immediately after calling him a monster, he's like, "But I don't have any problem with Shadow. He's he's a cool guy, I guess." Uh, but so we cut back and we get a line which I thought was interesting. Where he, um, it, it kind of uh, harkens back to what you said about this is a version of Team Dark who's clearly gone on like other missions before. Um, because there's a line where Rouge says, "Do I have to invoke Maria for the hundredth time?" Which is like. I mean, it's a fun line, but like, if you're actually looking back at like continuity, that's, I don't know if that's ever happened. <laughs> right. No, I, I, no, yeah, but I, I like it as far as, um, I thought this was an interesting choice is that they don't actually bring up Maria until that line. Like, there's no point in beforehand where like he thinks of her. There's no point where like, uh, like he said, or at the very least that he says like her name or anything. So I thought it was kind of like nice of him to not like, because, you know, nowadays it sucks that Maria has basically just been dropped and forgotten entirely for his motivation. But there's an opposite side of that where you have, like, Shadow the Hedgehog was like, Maria! You know, everybody <laughs> memes it where it's like he's just thinking about her all the time. So I like that there was this nice in-between where, uh, you know. I, yeah, go ahead. I will have you know there's a part for Shadow's bitchin' car in Team Sonic Racing called Maria's Boon. Uh, so clearly she has not been forgotten by Sonic Team. <laughs> clearly. Uh, but so uh, it seems like it has not worked because Shadow looks like he's about to murder her with a chaos spear, but it turns out he's just using that to point out the. But he misses or- and is lucky enough to kill the thing controlling him. That would have been funnier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would have been amazing. <laughs> uh, but so uh, we see the the little starfish guy. He's like, kill that thing. Um, and so they drive it away, and Shadow comes back to his senses, and we get 
hands down the best part of the book. Like this page with them talking uh, is just uh, is just great. We get the line where he goes like, uh, "We're in danger of becoming all buddy buddy like Sonic's Freedom Fighters," which I mean, oh no. <laughs> yeah, and I really like that. I like um, them being like, "No, Omega, you have to say you love us too." And he's like, "Yeah." Fine. That- <laughs> and then he says he, he trusts them. It's just it's just a great scene. Uh, I really like it. Uh, and I, I not to bash on IDW Shadow, except I will absolutely bash on IDW Shadow. Like these are the kind of scenes that like are sorely missing from from the the newer comics, or it's just like you know these moments, these like of like humanity from the characters, like especially Shadow is one that you know is is a lot, but like just in general. Yeah, because I generally find that my problem with IDW comes down to like the moments they try to maybe designate is like, yeah, that's their friendship moment is more like, yeah, we cool, bro. Yeah. We super cool, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I want like heart. <laughs> yeah. I want, like, I want like something like this where it's like, it's like they're embarrassed to like love each other so much. Like something like that. Just anything. Yeah. But like I said, this moment's great. Um, And then uh, we, we, <laughs> we, we have, uh, Omega being like you know the nine year olds reading this book where he goes maybe resume the violent conquest now. Um, <laughs> enough of this character shit. They uh, they're talking. He's like, okay, you guys go um, fight Eclipse. I'm gonna go kill Black Death. It's all cool. And then we get uh, this cool shot where he goes, Team Dark, move out. They part and they uh, they're fighting. We get a lot of cool art of just Shadow like laying waste to black uh, black creatures. Yeah, no, um, I like the whole little section, and I, I especially like the the build up to the ending where it's like, it's like you cannot destroy us. It's like I can, and I will. Blows up the wall, and then like the the glass shards fall from the ceiling and into the panels, and it's like, yeah, this is dope. Yeah, yeah, uh, we get another gold line from Omega where he goes, <laughs> where there, Rouge goes, I found them, they're still alive, and he goes, I am obligated to be pleased by this. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, where is the glorious death machine? Uh, yep, yep, that's another good one. But so, they get him down, and then we get a, a see where, uh, essentially, we get the ending of Shadow's, like, you know, conflict, quote-unquote, from the story of, like, you know, where he's like, no, fuck the Black Arms, Earth is my home, I'm gonna fight to protect it. And then he just grabs the starfish and slams it into a wall, which I thought was funny. Um, yeah. And then, uh, we get the you know the scene you were talking about where he busts in the door, and then they they they're gonna throw down. They got their glowy hands out, and they're uh, they're 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 about to they're about to fight. And so what's what is what's the off panel for this? I forget. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we get a cute off panel with a uh, with baby eclipse. I like this one. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, one thing I think is interesting is how um you know in a uh, nowadays they very much try to focus on shadow like you know shadow's the cool loner guy who like you know he's he's like dark and edgy and it's like i feel like this arc is a perfect example of like you know you can do that and like not make him a, a, a weirdo robot right yeah exactly like there's much more you can do with that than just yeah like you said it's like a weird yeah. loner um but so wrapping that up we go into sonic universe issue 62 shadow fall part four of four yeah i feel like there we won't have too terribly much to say about this uh Essentially, just Shadow's fighting Black Death. Uh, we get a cool scene where he takes off his inhibitor rings, which I think is interesting because the whole point of the inhibitor rings is supposed to be that when he takes them off, he gets like a, a lot of power for a bit, but ultimately it like weakens him. But we don't really see that in a like in this. He just kind of puts them back on at the end, and he's like, "Yep, well, that happened." True, but at this point in the, like, it being a thing, had that also even been established in, like, anything? Because I know, like, at the end of Sonic 06, we don't see it, like, drain him or anything. He just attacks at the end. So, is that just more of a, is that just more of a fan theory? Because I know that's in Project 06 for the the fan game version of Sonic 06 where uh, it it drains him or whatever. But I don't know if that's ever in the games. Like, is that ever a thing? I know it's in Sonic X because they make a point to show that um, essentially when Knuckles and Shadow are fighting, Knuckles uh like takes his inhibitor rings off without him noticing, and so he overextends himself. I want to say it was in preboot too, but I guess you would know better than I would about that. Um, in preboot, uh, 
he takes them off once and then like it kind of seems to drain him but i just what i more meant is like if he's going off like the games is it like something that the games have established or is it just more other media says this is uh, how it works well the the games he's only ever taken them off once in 06 and i don't think yeah so, I would, them off so i'm again. guessing he's probably just moving off of that or it's like yeah sure other media you know kind of portrays it this way but one it would also just be worthless to have for this story because he needs to run back so <laughs> yeah so this will be how it works <laughs> oh that'd be hilarious he's running back he's like oh, fuck i shouldn't have taken the inhibitor rings off <laughs> that was a bad idea <laughs> Although that could have been a, you know, that could have been a really good way to add more tension is like, is like, well, he needs it to win, but it's like that might, you know, doom him in the end. Uh, it wasn't a big deal because he's yeah, far enough away that you could just have him run back and say that like, oh, what if he, you know, what if he doesn't make it? But like, it still works. One thing I thought was weird was how long it seemingly takes him in that bit to get back to the, the spaceship. Because it's like it, we see the timer and it's counting down. It's like, obviously, in the games, you know, they move a little slower because, you know, we're playing them and we need to be able to control them. But in, like, the comics, they've always made it very clear that, like, Sonic speed um, is, you know, is super speed. You know, he can run, like, really fast, like, you know, like the Flash or whatever. And uh, Shadow, is uh, his speed has always been shown to be comparable. So it's like, why is it taking you so long to get out of this damn comet, Shadow? <laughs> Yeah, I just assume that the place is just so weird and winding that it's less about like needing to move fast and more of just needing to move all over the place. Yeah, well, and also all the black creatures at that point are dead, so he doesn't have them to like guide him through like the hive mind. Um, right. Speaking of which, uh, so we get the scene where, where, oh my god, it's amazing. He just, he just, uh, uh, Eclipse and the the Black Oak just just turn a corner and Omega just shoots him. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> it's amazing. And all, and you, it and wasn't supposed a, to be this way. Uh, you get Eclipse is like, is he crying or is that just like his bottom eyelid? I can't tell. But I mean, either way, he's very distressed. Yeah, he's not he's not having a good time. And so Eclipse activates his like. I call this his chonky form in my notes. I don't know if this has like an official designation. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he's big. Uh, so him and Omega fight for a bit uh, and then he loses. And then uh, they set the, the nuke and they get a hold of a shadow and they're like, hey, the, the, the nuke's going to go off. Everything's about to blow up, which, by the way, Eclipse, buddy, why did you put the nuke exactly where you didn't want it to be? Oh, Eclipse? <laughs> yeah, like, why? Like it's like you'd think if you were going to take the nuke, like, they, they, they had it as, like, a trap, but it's like they need the nuke. Like, wherever you put it, they would have to go get it. So maybe put it on, like, a corner of the comet? <laughs> maybe don't put it directly in the middle? That's hilarious. I didn't think of that. That's amazing. Like, it's, so, <laughs> it's just like, why? Like, but what so an anyway. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this, from what I remember, and again, it's been a long time since I've read any of these, Eclipse throughout this is he just kind of like a bumbling like fool for most of his appearances? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> like which I, is, I like, which is pretty great. <laughs> like one of the few images I remember from the arc where Shadow Knuckles fight on Angel Island is him running for his life, going Shadow's gonna kill me. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I yeah, I I don't think it's a plot hole. I just think he is stupid. Oh, I don't <laughs> think it's a plot hole. I think I think it's a character uh character, uh, character trait. <laughs> yeah uh uh but so anyway they're, they're like shadow we're setting the nuke it's gonna blow get out of there and he's like i gotta kill i, I got I, I gotta kill uh black, black death though and they're like you don't need to kill black death just get out of there and he's like no i'm gonna kill black death um and yeah. so and I, i'm making it sound dumber than it is he has a reason it's because they don't he doesn't want the nuke to get like interrupted but so um and we get a line which i like which is uh rouge going what is it with you and your martyr complex yeah, <laughs> uh, which I thought was fun. I, yeah, I there's a lot one. of good banter just throughout it, like between the the team. Like I think that no matter what you know, anything I have to say about the rest of the arc, it's a very good like. Just like if you enjoy Team Dark, like this is a arc for you because it's just oh, a lot yeah. of them just being very enjoyable. So if you're just well, here for the characters interacting, that's like the best part of it. Yeah, and one one thing I think is a uh, is interesting is that uh, well, first of all, like half of my notes are just like quotes from the book that I thought were fun. But um, one thing I think is interesting is I remember I was thinking back to this because, uh, you know, I said I read it like five years ago. I was like, yeah, I don't know if we'll get much discussion out of this just because, like, you know, 
uh all like the way i remember it was like they go on the comet they fight something shao turns evil for a bit and then they blow it up like um but yeah the real meat of it does come from the characters um and i would actually recommend i would say like because yeah, i remember i said last arc uh the treasure team tango nope pirate plunder panic i made that mistake so many times gosh darn it anyway uh with pirate plunder panic I said uh, I would recommend that to any like pre-boot purists um, just because I thought that arc um, served as a good like um, uh, kind of like bow on the pre-boot universe because it wrapped up like that plot line. Uh, with this, I would actually say if you've never read a Sonic comic before, but you're a fan of Shadow and you're a fan of like the early 2000s era of Sonic games, I would recommend picking this up. Um because I think the only thing you would really have any issue with is the fact that the world is blown up at this moment. But you yeah, know, I think and even then, just... like it's a re- well, and even then, that's just irrelevant to whatever it's you're com- reading. Yeah, is so, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I was thinking of that too, where I was like, this is kind of like the perfect story just for if you care about these characters and you don't like, and you just don't want to be lost, like you said. So yeah, yeah. I agree. Like I, I would totally recommend this to someone who it's just like, hey, do you like Shadow and you want more good Shadow content because you're not getting it in the games or IDW? <laughs> just go read this one yeah yeah um and uh and, and i think it's interesting juxtaposing this to um uh shadow saga from preboot whereas like obviously you know i prefer preboot you prefer preboot uh anyone with any taste prefers preboot but um <laughs> uh but uh this is definitely more accessible if you're just like a normie Whereas well, with, um, and also, well, and also it, it just gives you something that preboot doesn't have because their relationship isn't like this. So, well, well, yes, absolutely. But like Shadow Shadow Saga is all about like building Team Dark. Um, yeah, but it's it's also built upon a lot of like crap, uh, to say the least. I mean, I mean, Shadow Saga literally begins picking up from Hedgehog Havoc um, with uh, them teleporting to the soul dimension. And, you know, it's uh, it ties into a lot of other Archie stuff. Whereas with this, it's like, did you play Shadow the Hedgehog? That you can read this. Um, yeah. But so, uh, anyway, we get to this. Uh, Black Death sends out the thing, and I was a little confused by this. He, the he tells them to load the larva into the shuttle. So is this being sent down to to Sonic's world, or is this just going like somewhere else? Yeah, it's going down to Sonic's world because he's going to come back later. Okay. Okay. Um. And so Eclipse, in like a kind of painful to watch scene, gets dragged away from the bomb and put in a spaceship. And yeah, it's like and then his master dies in his arms and with through the starfish. <laughs> through the starfish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, so that you know, it's it's it, it's tough. You know, you you feel bad for him, or maybe you do. I felt a little bad for him, but so yeah. Um, Shadow and uh, Black Death are fighting. He chaos black. There's a cool line where, uh, where um, Black Death goes, I, I I will not die as Black Doom did, and Shadow goes, Yeah, because the line is essentially like, Yeah, because Black Doom was harder to kill. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they just murder him with a chaos blast. Um, in a a really cool uh panel again, the artwork in this book is really good. Um, is it Yardley doing this? It looks like Yardley. Um, I believe, yeah, I believe it was Yardley. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, I put in my notes, I put, uh, Black Death's lifeless corpse hits the ground with a thump. <laughs> he sure is super dead. And, yes. uh, which I thought was just funny that he just, he just does die. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought that was funny. Cause like he isn't even like disintegrated. He just falls on the ground. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty dope. Uh, I like when shadow is a, a murderer because, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is uh, well, which is funny too because the reason I like it when he's a murderer is because he's a big soft boy, whereas yeah. uh, IDW wants to make him a hard boy all the time and just make him like I want to kill everybody. And I'm like, no, you only get to kill after you have your vegetables. And he doesn't <laughs> listen, so yeah. I'm glad that in this they they keep it correct. Oh uh, yeah. Well, one thing I think is interesting is that um I've seen some controversy around Archie's version of Shadow. Um, because I mean, for all intents and purposes, he is just like one of the good guys. Like he's just one of Sonic's friends, more or less. Um, uh, and so people are like, well, no, he should still be like, you know, uh, you know, more like conflicted or whatever, but it's like, should, should he like, I, I would argue any like con conflicted 
like, you know, Ness, for lack of a better term, um, kind of went away with, like, you know, starting with 06. You know, like, since then, he's pretty much just been one of the good guys. And, like, yeah, you know, he has a darker demeanor. And, like, he works in his own team separate from, like, Sonic and the others. Like, you know, I would argue having him be, like, dark and brooding. and Like, that's the thing. It's like, so you just want him to be a dick for no reason? Like, it, like, and some people would be like, yes, I do. Uh <laughs> I think what it comes but, down to for me is I think maybe what people want is more like uh, less of maybe like, oh, I need them to be enemies and more just like they want more conflict because that's when Sonic and Shadow kind of had their most interesting dynamic was when they were at odds. But I think you can still do that without them being enemies, which is something that um, IDW could have leaned in on, on more, which is having Shadow kind of be the darker side to justice, whereas Sonic and IDW, he kind of has this moral code of like no killing and all this stuff. Um, or at least from what we can tell. And so it would, so I think what people may, you know, even if they don't say it this way, I think what they really want is they just want more conflict between the characters and you can do that without having them be enemies. But I think it's yeah. fine if they're friends, but I could totally see maybe wanting a little more of that where it's like shadow has his way of being a hero and shadow and Sonic has his, and those could kind of, you know, come into conflict, but yeah, Shadow's a weird case anyway, just because he doesn't really fit within, um, the Sonic universe in general, because all of his characters backloaded into the past. And then he has a lot of like conflict and depth to him that just doesn't really matter as far as like um, relating to other characters. So like, for example, like there's no, nothing about his backstory is going to inform the way he talks to Sonic. Nothing about his backstory is going to inform the way he talks to uh, Tails or Blaze or any of these people because it's all stuff that has nothing to do with any of them. So, which is why Preboot's kind of interesting because it actually takes his relationship with Maria and actually gives a character who that conflict would matter to, which is Hope. And so, it's mm -hmm. one of those things where like Shadow's just kind of screwed. Any way you look at him, you have to move on from a lot of the stuff set up because otherwise, you're just focusing on things that literally none of the other characters have any anything to do with. So, <laughs> except yeah. for like. I so he's kind of a hard one to crack anyway, but I totally understand what people mean. And I think that in this case, you know, what Flynn's always kind of done in preboot and reboot is Shadow just kind of exists in his own world, you know? And that kind of is the only way you can really keep him relevant because a lot, or at least with kind of the way he's portrayed, is just because otherwise, yeah, he would just kind of hang around Sonic and I guess just be his buddy. So you might as well just make him the hero of his own section of the world, if that makes sense. Or put him into conflict, but not in the way IDW does it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, and one thing, like, I've always said, like, um, and, you know, I remember I saw on Twitter a while back, like, what would your be your ideal, like, you know, dynamic between Sonic and Shadow? And really, it would just be like, you know, they're allies, but they like to, um, like, one up each other, you know, like, they like to prove that they're better than the other one. Like, I guess, uh, yeah, kind of like Sonic and well. Knuckles, really. Like, that's, I think that'd probably be my ideal version of um, Sonic and Shadow's conflict at this point in their careers, because they've both known each other. And so, like, like, I remember in Team Sonic Racing, I rolled my eyes 360 degrees uh, back in high school. My doctor was very concerned um, when <laughs> there's a line when Sonic goes like, oh, so Shadow, do you just come here to be Eggman's lackey? It's like, what? why would you assume that? At this point, after everything, why would you assume that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so um one thing uh i wanted to say building off what you said about how his conflict with maria isn't really relevant to any of the characters that was one thing i thought was interesting about like with sa2 um how they give him characters like um like with rouge that was more so a situational thing but like more so with amy uh she reminds him of maria and that she invokes that response in him um and she kind of remember uh, you know uh what's the word i'm looking for uh, I guess encourages, even though it's not the word I'm looking for, but I can't think of the word I'm looking for, uh, to, you know, do the right thing and, like, honor um, what Maria wanted. You know, it's kind of like how uh, in Spider-Man, the inciting incident for him being a hero is Uncle Ben, but the reason he kind of keeps being a hero is more so Aunt May and, like, her teachings. Um, and I thought you could have something done something like that with, like, you know, those two, uh, but then they just, like, never talk again after that scene in SA2. <laughs> Yeah, well, and again, the reason that kind of works is just simply because uh, that it's it's contextual, like his backstory is contextually relevant to the plot, whereas like it's kind of harder to bring it back, you know, as far as like, yeah, the, like we're literally dealing with the fact that Shadow has set it up so we'll all die. 
So <laughs> because of yeah. Maria. So, you know, because of what he thinks Maria wanted for him. So, yeah, Shadow's a, Shadow's, Shadow's a tough one to crack. Um, but, you know, it just kind of depends on how you deal with him. But all right. Is there anything else left in the story? He escapes and they they oh, they geez. they reunite, right? Yeah, they, he escapes. They re, he he jumps into space. He he teleports. Uh, it's a it's a cool scene. the The ending is very abrupt. Okay, like just... so I'm, yes, I'm glad you brought this up. So go ahead. <laughs> so, so he gets onto the ship. He's like, uh, you know, we we won, except we didn't win because Eclipse is there. And then it just cuts to like, and here's Knuckles. <laughs> yeah. No. I so. I like this arc, but I think what not ruins it, but just keeps it from being like, dang, wow, boom, mm, that was good. Uh, is that the ending is like they build up, they they it was it was right there. Why didn't you just do it? Which is the it's the simple ending of the, he gets back in there and they have like a moment where it's like, oh shadow, you're okay, and you have like one panel of them like hugging or like looking at each other or just being happy, and then it's like then you do the thing where Rouge is like, oh, trying to give me a heart attack, blue bitty blue bitty blue, and then you can go back from their banter. But instead, he just gets back. We immediately go like, oh, Shadow, you big jerk. I hate you. Ha ha ha. And then he's like, yeah, go read the Knuckles comic. And then it's over. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, no, the- why, why didn't you Why didn't you do the character beat? It was right there. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Also, we get another instance where, okay, so on the cover. Okay, so we get the um the, the scene with Knuckles where he's like, hey, he sees Eclipse's ship crashing. And it's like, hey, go read the Great Chaos Caper. Um, and he's in Pumpkin Hill, which is fun. But so we get... On the cover, it says the alternate ending, and then uh, you brought this up here, last time, where it's like it's no, no, not no, even no. alternate endings; it's just the it, ending. It, <laughs> well, well, but it gets even better because he says first it says alternate ending, and then it says turn the page to the after the credits ending, neither of which is correct <laughs> <laughs> because there are no credits before yeah. this, unless the version I'm seeing has them like removed for some reason, and it's still not an alternate ending. <laughs> so they're, yeah, it's so really they're both funny. wrong. But so, um, uh, but so yeah, and that brings us to the end of Shadowfall. Um, I think we we both said it throughout the story. Uh, we really liked it. Uh, it stumbles in a couple areas, but overall, I I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed reading it. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's one of those things where you know now that Flynn kind of has just he just works with what he has. It's you know he's able to kind of focus on what he's good at, which is the the character dynamics and. You know, while the the stories themselves, you know, like the like kind of the thing about Shadow, uh, you know, maybe not wanting to commit genocide on all these creatures and all these things. It's like, sure, a lot of those things aren't really like fleshed out as well as maybe someone would want. I think at the heart of it, it gets what I come to Sonic for, which is the characters and them just actually caring about each other and feeling like, you know, people. So and I get that. So I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you give ratings. I would probably just give it like a. It was probably like a strong seven. Like I might, I, you know, I'd probably go back to it eventually, um, which I, you know, I did for this and it was, it was enjoyable. It's not one of my favorite arcs in, in reboot or preboot, but it was good. And I think if you really like shadow and Rouge and Omega, like I've never been like a, like, Oh, team dark's one of my favorites. It's just more like, yeah, there are other Sonic characters I really care about. Uh, or I, you know, I really like, but if you really like them, then I would 100% recommend this because it's just all on that. Um, and it's good. So yeah, I would recommend it. Uh, well, Team Dark is one of my favorites, so I actually, um, I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, again, I think the thing that carries that is their dynamic. Um, so if you're not a big fan of Team Dark, I do wonder if it would suffer a bit. Um, but yeah, for me, I really enjoyed it. Again, I would say if you like Shadow at all, um, I would recommend picking this up. Um, yeah, I, I not, I, I mean, again, I can't really say much more about it. I think, uh, the lore implications are interesting, um, with like the black arms and with eclipse and all that. Uh, I do. So I do wonder, do we get like a resolution to or- ends or does eclipse just kind of like slink off into the shadows and like, you know, then the series gets canceled. No. Um, eclipse becomes very relevant to a later arc. Okay. That's good. Um, Cause I, uh, okay. But so then, uh, yeah, I mean, again, uh, I do not give number ratings because they're, they're hard to do and it's hard to keep them consistent. But overall, uh, I really enjoyed this one. Heck yeah. All uh, right, so- man. Well, I don't really have anything else to say about it other than that. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me as usual for these discussions. And I can't wait for the next one. Yes, yes. When we come back, we will be doing uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, the main book again. We will be covering issues. Let me pull up my notes. 
260 through 263. We will not be doing the uh, Origins free comic book day thing. We're going to wait until we get another three issue arc to um to do those, just so we're not talking for like two hours, because I'm sure the Origins will incite some discussion in and of themselves. All right. So uh, with that out of the way, uh, thank you all for listening, watching, whatever. Uh, if you've made it this far, you're a trooper, first of all. But second of all, yeah, please uh, leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing uh, if you enjoyed this. We should hopefully be back uh, pretty soon with uh, with the next arc or the next episode. We don't do the arcs. I, Archie does the arcs. We do the episodes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, but so, yeah, uh, I'm going to stop now because I'm rambling. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Bye.